This is a traditionally built acoustic guitar. It's the result of centuries of tradition and craftsmanship. And I'm about to crap all over that tradition by 3D printing this abomination. But here's the thing, this plastic guitar actually ended up sounding pretty good. So good in fact, that I made an identical wooden top to replace on it so that you can hear the difference between the two. So I want you to help me with a little test. I'm going to play some music from this plastic guitar, and then I'm gonna play an identical set from one using the wooden top. And I wanna see if you can tell which one is which. All right, you think you've got it? Because at the end of this video, I'm gonna give you the answer. But first, I wanna show you the ridiculous journey of building this thing. So what makes an acoustic guitar actually sound good? The real magic happens here in the body. When you pluck a string, the string vibrates and that vibration travels through the bridge and into this wooden top. That wooden top then vibrates and ultimately acts like a giant organic speaker. So what we're trying to do is replace this beautiful piece of wood that is really vibrant and sounds just alive with a cheap piece of plastic. This wood has this like natural structure and it's perfect for making music. And well, plastic, it's just plastic. On paper, this is probably the worst idea I've ever had. A 3D printed guitar should sound something like a toy. But this technology has one key benefit. It's perfectly replicatable. While plastic may be boring, its properties remain exactly the same with every single print. And that means we can make these quick iterations. That's the exact opposite of wood that tends to be different for every single piece that you get. Before we start melding any plastic, every project starts on the computer. I spent weeks designing this thing and my first decision was a big one. So I cheated. I literally copied the body shape of a classic, super expensive acoustic guitar. One that's been proven for decades, and that's why I ended up doing a Dreadnought. This gave me the perfect starting point for this insane experiment. And there was one thing that made building this cab model extremely difficult. This guitar top looks straight, but there's actually a slight curvature to it. That curvature is extremely important because that arch adds enough strength for the guitar to be able to hold 180 pounds of tension from the strings. And honestly, that took some serious effort to be able to get this arch just right. And the good news for you is that I'm gonna share this file with you so you don't have to make it yourself. We'll put a link in the description. The next challenge I had was the bracing. I wanted this to be as close as possible to a traditional acoustic guitar, so I copied the bracing pattern as close as I could. The bracing really has two jobs. First, it's gotta be strong enough to keep the guitar from literally exploding from the string tension, but it also has to be light enough to let the top vibrate. And this is where 3D printing gives you a huge advantage. In a normal guitar, the bracing is glued on, but with 3D printing, the bracing and the top can be one single monolithic piece. For future builds, I could design these insane organic patterns that would be impossible to carve from wood. But for this initial build, I just copied a classic bracing pattern and I optimized it for 3D printing. The next huge problem was the material. What kind of plastics do you use to make an instrument? Well, the default choice is PLA. It's cheap, it's easy to print, and it's pretty stiff. It seemed like a good place to start. But I also looked at PETG, which is tougher. And then there are some crazy exotic plastics, like you can get some that are made out of actual wood fibers mixed in. But since that really requires a hardened steel nozzle to print, I had to cross it off the list. So it came down to PLA versus PETG. And the PLA was stiffer, which should make for a brighter sound. While the PETG was a little softer and it would likely give a warmer tone, I decided to go with the standard PLA. My theory was that the top needs to be as stiff as possible to make a loud, bright instrument. And this is where I need to give a huge thanks out to AnyCubic. They provided the filament for this project. They make awesome 3D printers and they make great filament, so if you want to try this project yourself, definitely give them a look. And finally the printing began. The guitar was way too big to print this in one piece, so I had to slice the digital model into a ton of different pieces. Overall, there ended up being 21 different build plates. 
The printer started its work, slowly building this guitar 1.28 millimeter layer at a time. This process took days to complete, plate after plate of printing, plus, you know, a few mistakes. Sometimes parts that look perfect in CAD don't go together exactly as you expect. And other times you just completely mess up a measurement and maybe the carbon fiber rod in the neck uh, don't fit right and you have to improvise. Luckily, a quick trim with the hacksaw fixed the issue. I've updated the files so that you don't have to have that problem. With these massive pieces printed, it was time to turn this pile of plastic into a guitar. I carefully sanded the edges and used crazy strong two-part epoxy to bond the segments together, clamping them and leaving them overnight. Slowly, something that looked like a real guitar body started to take shape. It was incredibly heavy, but it felt surprisingly strong, and tapping it made a good sound. Yeah. At least, I think so. I've never built an acoustic guitar before, so I have no idea how the tap was supposed to sound, but it was great for me. I added heat set inserts so that I can change the top out to test different versions easily. I also put this rubber seal around the top because I assume we want the connection to be airtight as possible. Uh, all you guys that are real luthiers out there, tell me if this was even a necessary step. I'd love to hear from you. I made the neck so that it was completely bolt on. That way it can easily be adjusted or changed out. And finally, it was time to string it up. As I tightened each string, I could literally hear the plastic creaking and groaning. I was just waiting for it to implode. Please don't break, please don't break. But it held. It was finally a guitar. I tuned it all up and took a deep breath and I eventually played my first chord. Oh, no way. Yes! Oh my goodness, yes! And to my surprise, it actually sounded pretty good. Now with the plastic body complete, it was time to make a wooden top to compare. I built this one the traditional way, starting with an acrylic template. I sanded the Sitka spruce top down to a thickness of just under three millimeters, and I used a radius dish to get the proper curvature that a guitar needs. I cut the final shape on my CNC and glued on the braces using a makeshift go bar deck. But this is where my inexperience as a luthier really bit me. A couple of my braces were too big for the template and the glue didn't end up holding down properly. I used this opportunity to fix the brace and add a maple bridge plate. Also, the transference brace needs to be glued down using a flat surface, not the radius dish. That's because we want the flat surface where the fretboard meets the body. After getting those glued up, it's time to shape the braces. I'm sticking as close as I can to the same design as the 3D printed version so we can get a proper test, you know, but honestly, after this, I'm gonna scalp the heck out of those things and see if I can get it to sound even better. This is the moment the entire project has been building towards, the grand comparison that I promised you at the very first. Let's go back to our mystery guitars from the beginning, guitar A and guitar B. Guitar A was the plastic body with the real Sitka spruce top, and guitar B was the full 3D printed guitar. Now, be honest with me, were you fooled? Which one did you think it was? And let's break down the difference. Here's the fully 3D printed guitar. It's a little quiet, but the bass rings out more than you would guess. That and the mids really stand out some on it too. Really not a bad sounding guitar. Now, the hybrid guitar with the wooden top. The difference is extremely surprising. The wooden top was definitely louder, but it still sounds pretty darn close and it has the same kind of warmth and depth. It's actually pretty similar except for the volume. The results of this are fascinating. It really makes me think that the back and the sides contribute far less to the sound than the top does. And the plastic body does a job pretty well. But honestly, the plastic top isn't bad at all. Let's try versus a real guitar again. <laughs> it's just a lot better.
and it's a lot louder. But again, that's still not bad. Honestly, it's kind of the equivalent of like a laminate or like a plywood guitar, one of those cheaper ones. But I think we can make this better. Like, I've bought guitars that sound worse than that. So did I succeed in making a 3D printed guitar that sounds good? 100% yes. Even with the plastic top, it is completely playable and an awesome instrument with its own unique voice. It's bright and it's clear, it's just not super loud. That slightly thinner tone gives it a crystal clear sound that's genuinely impressive. It's different, but it's not worse. This experiment proves that a hybrid approach isn't just possible, it's incredibly promising. You could 3D print the super complex body of a guitar and put a real wooden top on top of it to get the best of both worlds, modern manufacturing and the classic sound of wood. So do you all want to see more experiments with this 3D printed acoustic? If so, I have a ton of questions. Would it sound better with carbon fiber filament? What if we could print the top in one piece? How would a resin top sound? Or what if I could make a, a top even thinner so that it resonates more? The possibilities are endless. And if you're interested in those ideas too, do me a favor and reach out to Anycubic and let them know that they should send me a bunch of free crap so I can test this all for you. Also remember, I'm gonna make all my files open source for this. I want you to try this at home. I hope that someone who really knows how to make an acoustic guitar sound good can take these designs, improve them, and print their own version. In the end, I wanted to see if a plastic guitar could sound as good as a wooden one. But I found out that that's the wrong question to ask. It doesn't have to sound the same to be incredible. We've proven that a guitar's soul really comes from its top. And we've shown that 3D printing is a powerful tool for creating the future of music, not just replicating the past. If you like this video, then there's a good shot that you want to start with something a little simpler, like 3D printing an electric guitar. If so, here's a great video for you. Also, if you want to see me test different types of tops, please make sure and like and subscribe so that you can tell me that you actually like this video and want to see more like it.